Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Chelsea. If you're new here, if you're not new, welcome back. I appreciate you coming back. If you are new, please do subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, across all social media. I am at IMCC Suarez. If you'd like to watch any of my other commentary content, go ahead and click right up there in the corner and you can go ahead and binge watch those. As always, sources, everything I mention will be linked down below along with merch, all of my social media, and a bunch of other information for you as well. As always with any of my videos where I am discussing a specific person, a public figure, I always do just want to give you a disclaimer. I know I have it in my description box and on the screen at the beginning of all my videos already, but I want to be able to verbalize one as well. Everything I'm stating in these videos, it is my own opinion. The information that I am showing is public information or information that has been sent to me by multiple sources who shall remain anonymous for their own safety. These type of deep dive videos that I do on specific people, it's not bullying, anything like that. This is not defamation. We will go over that later. It is just simply me doing a deep dive on a specific person that I found interesting. As I always say with all of my videos, please do not seek out anyone who I highlight in my videos, any companies that I highlight and berate them, send them hate, any negativity of any kind. That is not tolerated. I personally do not condone that. Now that we're done with all the disclaimers, let's go ahead and get right on into today's video. What's up, YouTube? It's Jessie Lee. Call me hashtag Boss Lee, and I hope you love the video you're about to see. I'm pretty sure you will. She's weird. She's different. She's too sexual. She's too religious. She's too much. Maybe she's just a leader. My life has been crazy and completely different than I ever expected it to be, and it's thrown me into a complete and utter path to change my life into exactly what it is today. It's been messy, it's been ugly, it's been everything, and it's all been perfect. I wouldn't have changed any of it. If I had followed what everybody else wanted, if I had finished college, which I did, and gotten a really good job, which I did, and stayed going more broke every two weeks with every paycheck, I would not be where I am today in my dream location. I would not be where I am today in my dream life and being told by a stupid boss that I have bad work ethic. It's being terminated for my first company because I was different, because I didn't look like they wanted me to, because I didn't dress like they wanted me to, because I didn't talk like they wanted me to, because I didn't act like they wanted me to. I decided to become an authentic version of myself and it has absolutely set my entire world on fire. And if you will put on your cape, if we're all gonna wear masks anyway, because of COVID, we might as well be our own superheroes. So maybe she's a leader and maybe she's a boss. And maybe all she does is win because maybe she's bossy. Multi-level marketing companies have been compared to cults for decades and for good reason. Not only are cult tactics used by multi-level marketing companies and their representatives during the recruitment process of new distributors, but even more so after someone has already joined and is in the organization in order to keep them from leaving. I always say everyone has a connection to multi-level marketing companies or MLMs as we're going to refer to them as. Either you fell for one, someone tried to recruit you into one, or maybe even a family member or someone you know is in one or has had an experience with one. Either way, everyone has a connection to one, everyone has a story. Unfortunately, more often than not, the victims of these type of cult tactics and manipulation don't speak up about their experience, which of course would help others, but they don't speak up due to feeling embarrassed that they fell for the scam, or even sometimes it's because they're scared of the consequences that might go along with speaking up about it. Multi-level marketing companies really hook people with the promise of becoming a business owner, becoming the person you want to be, having a better life in general, more money, this dream life. But unfortunately for most people, getting caught up in a multi-level marketing company turns out to be more of a nightmare than the dream life that's promised. Douglas M. Brooks, an attorney who specializes in representing victims of pyramid schemes, deceptive MLM programs, and business opportunity scams, agreed that Amway is one prime example of how MLMs mirror cults. Brooks recently presented a working paper at the 2019 International Cult Studies Association annual conference titled Coercive Techniques in Business Opportunity Cults. In the paper, he notes that Butterfield's experiences in Amway, as well as those of others who have written about 
about their time in this particular MLM included mass meetings with enthusiastic distributors, giving standing ovations to high-level Amway speakers, mysterious terminology, relentless focus on recruitment, positive thinking, the avoidance of any questioning of Amway or its high-level distributors, and the tendency for Amway distributors to dedicate more and more of their time and their energy to the organization, often at the expense of their relationships with friends and family, despite the lack of financial success. All of these factors are consistent with the popular perception of what a cult is. To this day, former distributors continue to make the comparison, and Amway is just one of many MLMs that function in this way. But what is the true definition of a cult, and how exactly do we spot one? It's not always as glaringly obvious as a bunch of people dressing alike, the shaved heads, getting rid of all their belongings, moving to a compound, and all drinking flavor aid. To answer this question, let's reference Stephen Hassan. Stephen Hassan is someone who escaped the Unification Church, also known as the Moonies, in 1976. Since then, he's become a mental health counselor and one of the leading experts on mind control and cults. Now, according to Stephen Stephen Hassan, a cult is an organization that exercises undue influence over its members to make them dependent and obedient. Sounds scary, I know. Now, since I know you're wondering, undue influence is defined as persuasion that takes over any free will or judgment. As a legal term, it refers to a person or a group taking advantage of their position of power over others. Now, in cults and other organizations that use mind control tactics, victims first experience undue influence in the form of love bombing. And as many of us know, love bombing is a manipulation tactic where you're showering someone with compliments and praise and affection, promising them, you know, this better life, more money, elite status, just a, a fantasy world, a fantasy opportunity in general. Now, once a member is hooked, the organization will employ a systematic method of control to disrupt that person's identity and really their ability to think independently, and let's be honest, rationally. Now, this is where the bite model comes in. The way I explain it, the bite model is it's basically a checklist if something's a cult, if that makes sense. But it's all about control. First, we have behavior control. This type of control is all about dictating who a person is and what they do. Behavior control can include restricting what type of food a person eats, the clothes that they wear, when they sleep, and who they're allowed to associate with. Financial exploitation, manipulation, or dependence is also often a key component of behavior control. Individualism is discouraged and group thinking is encouraged. Again, this is about stripping away the identity and many, many times, and at least in my opinion, I believe that a reason why this is a common manipulation tactic is to make you feel like if you didn't have this group of people or this organization, you would have nothing. So then that lowers your chances of leaving. Next, we have information control. To exert undue influence, cults will often withhold or distort information to make it more acceptable or simply flat out lie. Information control involves using deception, discouraging access to non-cult resources, encouraging spies on each other and producing propaganda such as newsletters, YouTube videos, movies, and other media. One great example of this is the widespread misinformation that is just running rampant in multi-level marketing companies. Another more specific example is how one reference that a lot of people in the MLM Monate will use is the website thetruthaboutmonate.com. That website is owned by Monate. Next up, we have thought control. Cults will also seek to control how members think so that the group's doctrine is accepted as the truth. Loaded language and cliches are used to stop critical thinking and reduce complex ideas to platitudes and buzzwords. Often, only positive thoughts are allowed. Constructive feedback, constructive criticism, challenging or questioning anything will get you immediately shut down. And this aspect of this is very prevalent through the fallacies, the ad hominems, the constant phrases and mottos, be your own boss, be your own sugar daddy, you're just a hater, meant for more, making money while making an impact, all of these buzzwords, phrases that we hear nonstop. And also the self-help and self-development aspect of cults is very prevalent in these last two types of control as well. And that leads us into the last one 
emotional control. Members of cults experience extreme emotional highs and lows. They're showered with praise one moment and then made to feel guilty, fearful, and completely unworthy the next. They're told that any problems they experience are their own fault and never that of the leader or the group. The cult instills irrational fears about leaving or questioning the leader's authority. And like I said, the self-development aspect of multi-level marketing companies is really intertwined with these last two because you are taught, oh, well, you're just not doing this hard enough you're not doing your self-help hard enough, you're you know, missing this, this, and this, when in reality, we all know that the odds are against you in a multi-level marketing company. Now, I did already give some good examples throughout the explanation of the bite model, but some very clear examples of how MLMs use these cult tactics are love bombing, the art of deception slash misinformation, financial exploitation, and using fear, guilt, and shame. When looking at most of the well-known cult leaders throughout history, I honestly find myself baffled and wondering who in their right mind is going to follow this buffoon and fall for the nonsensical BS that they're spouting. But the answer to that question is within that question itself. A lot of these people who are following these cult leaders or falling for this type of manipulation aren't in their right mind or they have certain pain points that the manipulation is really twisting into. And for lack of a better word, the manipulation is just that good. A certain amount of money, constant praise, and power would go straight to anyone's head. But what are the characteristics that draw that line between wacky, hustle-obsessed, self-help sales gurus on social media and controlling, manipulative cult leader? Narcissism is the root of several behaviors commonly associated with cult leaders. They demand extreme loyalty, they don't allow criticism, and seek to control everything that goes on within their following. Because they're driven by their ego, they believe that they deserve to make these demands. If there's one thing that pop culture has taught us about cult leaders, it's that they are very charismatic. As common as that descriptor is, it's actually a rather complicated and pretty subjective term. It could describe the leader's way of speaking, dressing, or how they treat their followers. Whatever it is, there's a magnetism to it that's extremely hard to resist. What appears to be special to one person might not be all that alluring to someone else. It comes down to the cult leader finding people who respond well to how they present themselves and then bringing that group, no matter how small, under their wing. Along with their magnetic personality and overall confidence, the cult leader's erratic, unpredictable behavior allows them to maintain a power balance. The leader will limit how often they actually appear before their following, and then when they do show up, they act with total duplicity. You'll never know when they're actually coming. You'll never know how they actually respond. This is a tactic that's a surefire way to keep your followers constantly on edge and always wanting to please you. Once they've established their movement and gotten a taste of power, most cult leaders develop a clear motivating force behind their actions, whether it's status, money, even sex, or all three. Even if they claim to be working or speaking for a higher power, it's far more likely that they're acting to serve their own ego. The lengths they'll go to satisfy their desires are usually far beyond the average person's limits. They don't have any shame. They'll demand things a decent human being wouldn't. Jessie Lee Ward goes by many aliases, but her most well-known would have to be her Instagram handle, I'm Boss Lee. Jessie is from Massachusetts, although she currently lives in Texas, and by her own account, she grew up very poor, which she even says has been her motivation to never live like that again. Although she's currently a distributor for the multi-level marketing company Prove It, which sells ketone products and other health and wellness products, her journey in network marketing started well over 10 years ago. From around 2010 to 2015, Jessie Lee was in the MLM called Pure Romance. Due to her high energy, impressive work ethic, I'll admit she does have a, she never stops working, and I'm assuming manipulation tactics such as love bombing, she quickly rose to the top of the company. In a couple interviews and even in Jessie's own social media posts, she says that she left due to reaching the top of the compensation plan, meaning that there wasn't an uncapped earning potential. Now, sources close to Jessie have claimed that that wasn't necessarily the case. And again, this is not me saying that this is the truth. I am just reporting 
what I have been told and what has been claimed by other sources. Now, they have alleged that while on a leadership trip for, you know, top performers of the MLM side of the company, that she was talking to someone in a very high ranking position, the CEO, the president, something of that nature, and approached him with ideas regarding improving the compensation plan. Allegedly, he liked it first and everything seemed fine, but then I guess he didn't like it and they had some type of altercation and then she got the boot. Again, I am not stating that as fact. I am not stating that as truth. It seems that Jesse Lee does have a true talent for acquiring unquestioning loyal followers. This is evident when she moves from one multi-level marketing company to another and has a good handful of her downline follow her from one company to another. She's done this twice. Now, I don't agree with MLMs. I have made that very clear on, on my channel. But if you think about it, that is a pretty smart way to cheat the system, so to speak, so that you're not actually starting at the very bottom and having to really start over with a whole nother company. You basically have a built-in downline. Now in 2015, at just 26 years old, Jesse Lee, like I already said, moved from Pure Romance and moved over to Modere. Jesse claims that it only took her about 15 months to reach the top of the compensation plan, the highest rank within the company. And she says, and I quote, this proved to me that it was not a pyramid scheme, which I'm not sure how that proved to her it wasn't a pyramid scheme. That doesn't really, that doesn't make sense. Ironically, in around 2013 to 2015, Modere was being rebranded, or rather New Ways was being rebranded into Modere. New Ways has a pretty sketchy past. In 2006, the two founders of New Ways were sent to prison for tax evasion after over a decade sprinkled with legal issues. New Ways was acquired by Golden Gate Capital, and that's also the same company that owned Herbalife before taking it public. Now, another reason for that rebranding from New Ways to Modere was allegedly due to allegations of New Ways being, you know, having some pyramid scheme-like characteristics. And that was basically because for their distributors to remain active, they would have to commit to a monthly auto ship. And also they had a very, very heavy reliance and just a heavy emphasis on recruiting in general, which now that I'm saying that out loud, that's, the, <laughs> I could be describing Q Sciences as well, which is still, it's a MLM that is growing in popularity right now, which is very unfortunate, but that's another deep dive for another time. Now, Jesse Lee was actually terminated from Modere in late 2017, I believe, like late summer 2017. The dates are all over the place. So I'm pretty sure it's late summer, like July, September-ish of 2017 for reasons that we'll discuss later. So just like the move from Pure Romance to Modere, she took a handful of that downline, those loyal, loyal people, and moved right on over to prove it. The only difference here, though, is that allegedly a handful of the people right below her while she was in Modere were also terminated along with her, which is really unfortunate. Now, Jesse claims that within the first 10 months of joining Prove It, she, she became a million dollar earner within that company and that her team is the fastest growing team within Prove It, not only in the US, but also Canada, Europe, Mexico, Australia, and even Asia as well. Now, many of us already know that MLMs, the uplines, they can be very emotionally abusive, mentally abusive. I mean, just look at that bite model we went over already. And because of that, extremely cult-like. I don't even want to imagine what it is like for people in her downline. Unfortunately, I have been sent so many testimonials, stories of just so many things from people who were still currently directly under her, people who were directly under her for a long time, people at you know every stage or every level of her downline with all the way back to pure romance, people who joined in Modere, people who just joined and prove it, or you know people who have been with her this entire time. Again, like I said, people who are still in and people who have already gotten out. Now again, another disclaimer, I am not saying that any of these things I'm about to show you are truth. I am not saying that they definitely happened. I am just showing you what people have sent me. And that's it. These are other people's alleged experiences and what they have claimed to have happened. It doesn't matter how loyal you were to her on a personal level. She would give you the boot. She didn't want anyone to look down on her because of her inner circle. 
blank wanted to leave the MLM for real estate. Jesse told her she wouldn't be successful and that she couldn't leave. Blank thankfully left. She didn't want you to run your own downline. If she thought you were being too much of a leader, she didn't like that. She would go behind your back and turn your top leaders under you against you. She basically cut people out and stole their downlines. That ruins people's lives. You can't host anything if you're in her downline. Not a training call, not an event, nothing. She has to be there to control everything. She told us to shave parts of our heads to release our emotions. If we didn't do it, we would be kicked off of her team. I didn't see how culty that was until months later. I've tried to get out for years now. She says things that make me think I won't be successful if I leave. I don't want to be on the receiving end of her wrath. I've seen it. She will ruin my life. She made very defamatory accusations against another top earner in Modere. It seems like she hated him for no reason. He sued her. She wouldn't hand over information to Modare corporate and wouldn't let people under her do so either. They were all terminated along with her. It was so sad to watch. Jesse's childhood best friend wouldn't leave pure romance when Jesse got terminated. So Jesse threatened to take the girl's team from her. Boss Lee was my upline's upline. Jesse flew across the world to have a meeting with those of us who were the top leaders. This was a secret meeting without my upline. Jesse told us the most horrible things about our upline and almost everyone believed her and turned against her. They were so horrible to her and pushed her out. Turns out, None of the things Jesse told us to turn us against her were true. For the next year, Jesse would go live on Facebook and say horrible things about my upline. She'd make aggressive posts about her. She even removed her from all of the groups, even though she was still technically our upline and still in the company. We were forbidden to speak to her, and if Jesse found out we spoke to her, we would get the same treatment. Jesse encouraged all of us to send harassing, mean messages every single day for a year until she finally quit the MLM. Jesse turned everyone against her, even the CEO of the company. All of this happened because my upline openly questioned Jessie Lee. She was actually being a good leader, but she wasn't letting Jessie control every little thing, so Jessie ruined her life. It took me years to recover and reclaim my life after falling into Jessie Lee's manipulative trap. On the outside, her life seems pretty perfect, right? To the world, she has the home, the free cars, the support system, whatever man of the hour, and her faith after coming from a broken childhood. In actuality, she's broken. The people she stepped all over aren't broken, but they were fooled into thinking they are. She love bombs people with incentives in the form of gifts, but I promise you, the moment you underperform and lack her standards, you are nothing to her. I feel so incredibly sorry for her. It must be lonely at the top. Instead of cultivating meaningful relationships, she gains flattery from those who mimic her appearance and behavior. Who's there to call her out on her bullshit when she only has sheep? Oh, I'm sorry, I forget. The grass is greener where she is. I suppose when you fertilized your grass with all the souls of the vulnerable people who were loyal to you, it could get like that, huh? Hey, Jesse Lee, you're welcome. Again, I am not saying that any of that is true. I am not stating any of that as a fact. I am just showing y'all what has been sent to me. However, with talk of lawsuits, let's go ahead and get into that. Jesse Lee has said, and I quote, I sue people all the time because people are stupid. I sue people all the time because people are stupid. In 2017, Advocare International, that has actually been shut down due to being a pyramid scheme since then, they sued Modare, Jesse Lee, and another Modare distributor for recruiting and attempting to recruit people from Advocare in to Modare. According to court documents, Jesse Lee has been involved in multiple lawsuits with Modare as the defendant and the plaintiff. I'm Boss Lee has been involved in quite a lot, <laughs> a plethora of lawsuits, if you will. I'd say it's safe to say more than the average human. As stated in one of the testimonials we just went over, Jesse was sued by another top-ranking Modare distributor named Justin Prince. And according to court documents, plaintiff Justin Prince filed this action alleging defendant, Jesse Lee, defamed him by posting false accusations about him in an online social media chat room. Specifically, the amended complaint asserts that the defendant accused the plaintiff of, among other things, inappropriate sexual conduct with women not his wife and being addicted to opioids. Plaintiff further alleges that defendant directed a private investigator acting as her agent to send an email to Modare executives containing accusations that plaintiff engaged in intimate acts 
with a named Modair business associate, alleged to have a sexually transmitted disease. The plaintiff contends that the defendant claimed to have tapped Modair's telephone system and attempted to entice the company to pay $40,000 in cash in exchange for additional information about the plaintiff. The plaintiff maintains all of the defendant's allegations are false and that the defendant's motivation was to, quote, ruin, end quote, his reputation, cause him to be terminated by Modair, and destroy his business and family. The amended complaint alleges that defendant told others she wants him destroyed and that she would, quote, love nothing more than to see him lose his house, his wife, and even his life. Plaintiff claims that he has suffered permanent damage to his reputation and business, and he asserts four causes of action in the amended complaint. One, defamation, slander, libel. Two, intentional infliction of emotional distress. Three, tortious interference with business relations. And four, conspiracy. Oof, yikes, right? And it is also alleged that her immediate downline, I believe like a a handful of them, 10 of them, two handfuls really, were sued along with her for their involvement with this. Now, like I said, sources have claimed that this is one of the reasons why Boss Lee was terminated from Modair. But why don't we just look at an email from the head of the company to figure out why? Sunday, September 24th, 2017. Trusted leaders, recent activity relating to Jesse Lee Ward's termination has prompted me to provide a few of our leaders with a statement providing facts to help you protect your teams. Jesse Lee has shown she is willing to trade her integrity to protect her image, and so it should come with no surprise that we were now dealing with half-truths and lies in the wake of her leaving. It is my hope this communication will help you to dispel rumors and attacks some of our people are being exposed to. Basic facts around the termination of Jesse Lee. Modair has clear and irrefutable evidence of Jesse Lee and other social marketers on her team engaging in defamatory and negative statements about the company and other social marketers. In July, Jesse Lee was suspended and given opportunity to correct the behaviors in order to move forward in good standing with the company. This was done in an environment of encouragement and collaboration with the hope of retaining her. While under suspension, new and far more egregious infractions occurred. Modair has irrefutable evidence and proof that Jesse Lee did engage in the services of a private investigator and did direct this individual in an elaborate scheme to mislead the company with the intentions to disfame, discredit, and ultimately seek the termination of other social marketers in Modair. To support the lies, they even went so far as to create fake public documents which were sent to the company as evidence. Also during this period, Jesse Lee propagated malicious rumors in the field concerning these social marketers. One of them has sued her for defamation and is seeking $15 million in damages. Almost immediately upon her termination, Jesse Lee began to create a story that she was framed and had nothing to do with the claims against her. We believe the evidence is clear and that her claims are lies. Further, we have heard a rumor that she told other social marketers Modair paid off her private investigator in order to turn on her. At no time before or after her termination has Modair paid anything to her private investigator, nor will the company ever do so. Upon being confronted with potential legal action in their part in Jesse Lee's scheme, the private investigator immediately turned over all communications and other evidence clearly implicating Jesse Lee as the orchestrator of the ruse. Other rumors that the company targeted Jesse Lee because she was a top earner in the company are false. The facts are that in the month before her suspension, Jesse Lee was not in the top 10 earners of the company. Most of Modair's top earners have been with the company for many years. The assertion that the company is quick to terminate social marketers is also false. We do not take these decisions lightly and only exercise this right when we feel it is needed to protect all social marketers and the company. In fact, prior to Jesse Lee's termination, I have not been involved in a single termination in my nearly five years with Modair. After her termination, more evidence came to light, which indicated that other social marketers were involved with Jesse Lee's scheme. Several of these social marketers were suspended and given an opportunity to resolve the concerns and allegations raised by the company. The rumor that these individuals were put into a difficult position by the company with no way to rectify it is simply not true. The truth is, not one of these individuals responded to the company within the 14-day response window that they were given in an effort to quickly resolve the issue. We have also seen 
a hastily and poorly written draft of an alleged lawsuit from Jesse Lee against the company. As of today, the company has no reason to believe, nor is there any indication that a lawsuit has been filed by Jesse Lee against Modair. This appears to be a tactic meant to distract others from her bad behavior. Our policy and procedures, as well as our social marketer agreement, require any dispute with the company must be resolved through arbitration. In following proper protocol, Modair gave Jesse Lee ample opportunity to appeal the decision made to terminate her. She did not exercise this right, which one would certainly do if they could produce even a shred of evidence to show the company was in the wrong in this decision. It is our responsibility as leaders of the company to protect each other and our culture. When someone threatens one of our team members' businesses, they threaten us all. As needed, please remind your team members that cross-recruiting is a behavior designed to induce a social marketer to explore joining a competing network marketing company. We have seen that a tactic of this group is asking people to sign a non-disclosure agreement prior to any conversation. This appears to be a blatant attempt to hide a serious breach of contract and an effort to encourage others to breach their agreements with Modair. Let us be vigilant during this time. Any evidence of cross-recruiting should be turned over to the company in order to help us protect our businesses. Now, I know typically people who are at the C-suite level of corporate companies don't typically know write their own emails, but that was one of the most beautifully written emails I have ever read. So good. Just so, so well-worded, so eloquent. I loved it. Just a good old punch in the throat. But I want to say this. All too often, people with power, money, and huge egos will threaten legal action and even send cease and desist letters in order to scare people into silence. In my opinion, this is what Jesse Lee Ward does. And let's be clear, anyone can send a cease and desist to anyone. Anyone can sue anyone. It doesn't mean that it's going to go anywhere, that they're going to win. It, it doesn't mean any of that. It's all, it's just paper being sent, basically. Now, if you don't know what a cease and desist is, it's basically just a warning. Like, hey, if you don't stop doing this, if you don't cease and desist doing this, you are going to be sued. And in my experience, and in my opinion, it's just a, a fancy scare tactic. Typically though, it's not worth the time and the money and the energy to actually see things through. So again, out of convenience or being intimidated or feeling threatened, people will just comply with cease and desist letters. Now I have firsthand experience with all of this. Here is my cease and desist letter that I received from Jesse Lee Ward's attorney's office. Dear Miss Suarez, first of all, it's Mrs. I write on behalf of Jesse Lee Ward. Miss Ward has informed our office that you have been posting false statements about her and her businesses on social media sites, including YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. Such actions can be construed as libel since it is a defamation expressed in writing or graphic form. Libel is defined as any statement that tends to injure Miss Ward's reputation and thereby exposes Miss Ward to public hatred, contempt, or ridicule, or financial injury, or to impeach her honesty, integrity, virtue, or reputation. That's actually not what libel is defined as. Notice how it says any statement. No, not any statement statement false statement that are stated as fact, but we'll get into that too. You are hereby given formal demand to cease and desist from publishing such statements about Miss Ward and or her businesses. We request that you remove any such videos from your social media accounts and refrain from mentioning Miss Lee or her businesses again by name that they are known, including but not limited to Jesse Lee, Jesse Lee Ward, JL, Boss Lee, I'm Boss Lee, The Empire, which is one of her LLCs, I guess, and Jesse Lee LLC, which is spelt without the I, which is weird. If you do not comply, Miss Ward will have no alternative but to file suit against you for libel. Sincerely, a, a joke of a attorney's office. So first and foremost, in my opinion, that was a very poorly executed threat and really just a, a embarrassingly written cease and desist. When sending a cease and desist letter, you should always reference specific events. And this doesn't do that at all. It's extremely general. I've reviewed all of my videos on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube in which I feature Jessie Lee Ward, aka Boss Lee, and reacted to her content that she posted publicly on the internet. In the following videos, Top Fails number 9, Top Fails number 14, Top Fails number 23, and MLM Top Fails number 33, I included clips of her in those videos and reacted to them. I did not say her name and I blurred her face. 
which I don't have to do because she's a public figure. We'll get into that as well. And top fails number 39, I didn't blur her face. And I said her name multiple times, loud and proud. And this was already after she threatened to sue me and send me a cease and desist and it took forever. And after she posted a Facebook post where she actually said that people talking about her on the internet make her more money or anti-MLM YouTubers such as myself make her more money. And she doesn't know why we blur her face or why we don't say her name and that she says it loud and proud. So I took that as an invitation that it was okay to say her name and unblur her face, which again, I don't have to do because she is a public figure. Now, I think what triggered Jesse Lee to send the cease and desist to me was a video on TikTok that I had posted. I can't remember exactly what the person had asked me, but it was a comment video response that I was doing, answering someone's comment. And they had asked me, I don't even really remember, but it was something along the lines of what do you you know know about Jesse Lee or I'm Boss Lee and then another person that's improved it that's pretty high up. And I had said something along the lines of, you know, my DMs are just full of hundreds of people and testimonials and people sending me stuff about her. And I probably will be doing a deep dive. And I had even said, allegedly, she was let go from one of the MLMs due to having an affair with someone who was high up in the company, not on the MLM side, but on the corporate side. Now, I did not state that as true. I had just said that someone else claimed for that have been what had happened. I have since deleted that TikTok video. And no, I didn't delete that because of her or anything. I deleted that just I don't know, sometimes I delete TikToks or Instagrams or things like that. It happens all the time. However, I am Boss Lee did comment on that video and say something along the lines of this video is scary for you. And she said something else, but I thought that was very interesting. And I was like, that sounds like a threat. Is that a threat? So I responded to her and I even said, and clear things up, you know, I would love to interview on my channel. And of course I did not get a response regarding that. Well, I guess I did get a response to my invitation for an interview. This. In my last Unethical Influencers video, which technically this is in that series too, but that one was on Shannon Rose. And we discussed protective language, libel, slander, def defamation, all of that. And I don't want to be redundant, but for the sake of context, we're gonna go over it again and in more depth because it has to do with me personally. And obviously this is a lot more specific and I am being threatened with legal action. I always use protective language. Not only is that just a habit of mine from my years in sales and marketing, but protective language is also imperative in the world of commentary and media. Now, like I said in that last video about Shannon Rose, the word allegedly or protective language isn't just going to save you from anything, right? The word allegedly, according to dictionary.com, means according to what has been claimed. It's used to describe an action or a situation that someone claims to have happened, but has not been proven or confirmed to be true, especially in regards to crime. Defamation. I've said the word defamation so many times in the last four months. It's honestly losing its meaning now. Defamation is the act of damaging the good reputation of someone. Now, like I said in that last video, there are two versions of defamation. There's slander, which is spoken. The way I remember that is the S in slander is for spoken. And then there's libel, which means written or published, which includes social media, news outlets, like in anything like that, right? Even if I'm speaking it, it's not slander because it is published or it's in media form. So therefore it is libel. Now, first and foremost, for something to actually be considered defamation, it has to be a false statement presented as a fact and not an opinion. Opinion. To prove defamation, a plaintiff must show four things. A false statement presented to be fact, publication or communication of that statement to a third party, fault amounting to at least negligence, and damages or some harm caused to the person or entity who is subject of that statement. In the New York Times versus Sullivan in 1964, the Supreme Court held that for a publicly known figure to succeed on a defamation claims, the public figure plaintiff must show that the false defaming statement were said with actual malice. The Sullivan court stated that actual malice means that the defendant said the defamatory statements with knowledge that it was false or with reckless disregard of whether it was false or not. The Sullivan court also held that when
when the standard is actual malice, the plaintiff must prove actual malice by clear and convincing evidence rather than the usual burden of proof in a civil case, which is the preponderance of the evidence standard. On this point, the precise language the Sullivan Court uses is that the plaintiff must show the convincing clarity which the constitutional standard demands. I could sit here and make the general argument of being protected by the First Amendment, freedom of speech, but we all know I can't just stop there, <laughs> especially because on the internet, on social media, it seems like m people throw around words and they don't know what they actually mean. Now, defamation laws protect people whose reputations, finances, livelihood, basically, have been damaged by harmful, false statements. However, defamation law often intersects with laws that protect free speech, which is guaranteed by the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. So just as it's important to protect people from the harms of untrue statements, it's also necessary to protect free speech and the right to free speech without fear of reprisal. If the defendant, someone being accused of defamation libel, anything like that, if they can prove that the statements they were saying are true, then the defamation case ends right there. People cannot be punished for speaking the truth, no matter how ugly or embarrassing it might be, or how much you just don't like it or don't want it to get out. Truth is always a defense to a claim of defamation. However, <laughs> opinions are different. Now, obviously the reason that I brought up the First Amendment freedom of speech and that being protected is because opinions are protected under that typically. But then the question comes, okay, was it actually an opinion that you said or were you just saying something with, in my opinion, before it? And as I said before, just because you're saying allegedly or using protective language, like I think or in my opinion or something like that, and then stating something as a, as a fact and as a statement or as a, a definitive, really, you can't just say whatever you want. Public officials and public figures, Jesse Lee is a public figure have placed themselves in the public eye and therefore it's more difficult for them to bring a successful defamation claim in addition to the things that private individuals have to prove in cases of defamation, public figures have to prove that the statement was made with malice, like we've already covered. Jessie Lee Ward is a public figure. She's verified on Instagram. She's spoken on stages with thousands and thousands of people. She's been published in multiple articles and she's given a lot of interviews. And like I said, she's she's verified on Instagram. Not that that is, you know, the one qualifier to being a public figure, but she is. She's a public figure. And I make it very clear in all of my videos that everything I say is my own opinion. Like I said, context is key. I've never made false statements and presented them as facts. Never. Jesse has also posted to Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and team calls and team trainings that anti-MLM content creators, commentary content creators, haters, the general public, basically, are actually resulting in her making more money in network marketing and that they don't affect her in any negative way. Also, she does not own the MLM that she's in. She does not own Prove It. She might be a pretty high-ranking distributor for them, but she does not own it. So therefore me saying, I believe that Prove It is a pyramid scheme operating as a multi-level marketing company, that doesn't have anything to do with her. Yeah, she sells the products, but that has nothing to do with her. At the end of the day, when the camera stops recording and the video end screen starts playing, I'm all about consumer education and consumer protection. Yeah, I poke fun here and there. I do deep dives on public figures, yes. But to me, this is all about, one, entertaining you, of course, but education and protection. Direct sales, network marketing, multi-level marketing, social selling, I don't care what you call it, that industry has shown and proven for decades that it is unethical. I don't think it's okay to manipulate people for your own financial gain. And going even further than that, in my opinion, threatening legal action against someone and attempts to silence them because you don't like what they're saying about you. Not only is that wrong, but it's cowardly, it's a dick move, and it's just not a good look. Now, this next statement does not only apply to this situation with I'm Boss Lee, but it also applies to any any public figure, any person that is threatening legal action against me or any type of content creator. The only thing that will come out of that is more attention to this overall message, to this movement, and to me. Because let's face it, I am the type of person 
person who takes hate comments and makes videos about it and makes makes a profit off of that. I can turn any type of situation into content and then that's a profit for me. <laughs> I would just continue to make content out of it. I would I would give all of the interviews. I would I would do everything and anything I could to get as many eyes on it as I could. So please please know that you are more valuable than you even know and you're too valuable to be in a multi-level marketing company. You are too valuable to be taken advantage of for someone else's gain, someone else's financial gain at that. That's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Remember, set boundaries, be assertive, and remember to stay spicy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.